Okay, so let's start um, looking at this. Um, so we're going to try and look at how to improve your band score. Okay, so what are the things that the examiner is looking at for the IELTS writing and what can you do in order to get the best score that you can? Okay, so one of those is, you know, making sure you can, uh, making sure that you are answering the question exactly as it is written. Um, one mistake, quite a common mistake that candidates make is that they ask quite a, they answer in quite a general way. And sometimes the question's very specific. Uh, or it has different aspects that you need to talk about. Um, so it's very important that, you know, that you're answering exactly the question that you're being asked. Um, then we'll also look how to structure your answer um, and how to link things together so that it's very logical and it makes sense. You know, all of these are important things for getting a good band score. Um, not even really related to grammar or vocabulary, but, you know, in terms of the content and how you structure it. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is making sure that you have got a, a relevant and complete answer. Okay. So this is the example question that we are going to look at today. Okay. Um, so as you can see, it says discuss both sides and give your opinion. Um, so this is what we call a discussion essay. It means that you have two points of view in the question and you have to address both those points of view in your answer, okay? So your, the body of your essay should be objective um, and then the conclusion is what is where you give your personal opinion. Okay, so anytime it says discuss both sides, remember you need to have one body paragraph uh, supporting the first idea in the task and one body paragraph supporting the second idea in the task. Okay, uh, so before you start writing, a few things you need to do. Uh, so you need to, you know, obviously read the question very carefully, but a good idea is to underline the key words in the question and then use those as the basis for a plan, okay, so that you have a, a, a plan ready before you already write, all right? So um, one other thing before we do that is it always says at the end of the writing question, uh, give reasons for your answer and include relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience, okay? This doesn't mean personal anecdotes, okay? You should never put any kind of personal information into the essay, okay? It's strictly objective, abstract ideas. When it says relevant examples, it could be from your profession, from your country, from your city, but you use it, you express it in an abstract way or in a general way rather than talking about it as this is something personally that happened to me. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind because that is a common mistake is people putting personal anecdotes in, in the body, okay? So uh, if we were to underline the key words in this question, what do you think the key words or the key expressions in this task are that we need to make sure that we include in our answer? Okay, good, yeah, so university education, that's on the one side, yeah. Um, what's the other, and then the other side is the, um, good, yeah, the experience. So those are our two opposing ideas, yeah, experience and soft skills, okay? And if we look at, again, at the first sentence, what we're talking about here is getting a job. So it's not about anything else, but it's in terms of the best way to get a job, is it university education or is it real life experience? Okay, 
Anything else that you would underline there in the task? What do you think? Something a bit more than that. What kind of question is it? <laughs> nope, <laughs> that's quite good. Yes, okay, I think it's, you know, it can be quite useful just to underline the type of question it is, just so that you remember that you have to do both sides, okay? Um, so yeah, underline the task as well, all right? So, and then before you start writing, you make a plan. That's also really, really, really important, okay? Make sure that you have all of your ideas written out first. Yes, that's right, Why? And, you know, there could be different ways, but what's the best way? So is it university education or is it experience, okay? Um, so make sure that you write a plan before you start writing the essay, okay? That way, if you've already decided on your content, then when you write the essay, you can really focus on the grammar, you can focus on the vocabulary, the linking expressions, and you're not still thinking about ideas, okay? That's often a way to be rather confused in your answer and not sticking exactly to the question, okay? So, um, we have to talk about both sides. So one of our body paragraphs is going to be why university education is good. So what could you put there? What could be your argument for supporting university education? Soft skills are things like giving presentations, negotiating, okay, writing reports. Okay, professional preparation, yeah, okay. An academic understanding, any other reasons? Okay, yes, okay, maybe to do with the lecturers, the, the professors that you meet, okay, yeah, okay, very good, advanced learning. Okay, yeah, getting diplomas, getting guidance, that's very good, office, yeah. Getting qualifications, those are all good arguments for, for supporting the education, okay? Um, so what we've gone for is, if you're talking about certain professions, then it's essential, okay? Very good, Vangali, you just put exactly the right word out. Um, so what we're going to do with our paragraphs, okay? We need to have the same structure for each of our paragraphs. So the main idea, so your argument and then a reason supporting your main idea uh, and then an example, a specific example to support what you're saying, okay? So think of your structure in that way. So we have the main idea and then we have what we call supporting evidence, okay? Um, so that means that you always have to support or back up your argument from the first sentence, okay? If you don't have good supporting evidence, very hard to get a good mark in task response, okay? Um, yes, Min, you will be able to watch it afterwards. It's recorded. It should be up on YouTube tomorrow and on the Facebook page, okay? All right, thank you, Dimitru. And hi, Dimitru, nice to see you again, okay? So then we do the second thing in our second body paragraph. So we've talked about the uh, why university education is good. So why might we say that actually experience is a better way to get a job? What, what would be a good argument? Okay, networking, that's quite nice, yeah, okay. What else could we say? Okay, so yeah, hands-on experience, very nice expression, ability. Yeah, getting more depth of the topic. Okay, yes, learning from your mistakes. That's a really good way. Learning from other people. Okay, good, really, really good. Yes, working in teams. So again, there's very much a, a learning environment from actually doing it, yeah? Okay, okay, very nice, Gaya. Okay. Um, experience is the best teacher, yeah? Okay, um, so what we're saying is that really it depends on the career. So in this case, uh, 
you know, in certain professions, practical experience is going to be um, more important, okay? Um, and as you said, that's sometimes the only way you can really learn something. All right. Uh, and then again, we can give some examples of certain types of jobs um, that, where that might be the case, okay? Uh, so body paragraph one, supporting the first statement, body paragraph two, supporting the second statement, main idea and supporting evidence. You can also have two main ideas on each side, but they should be balanced the two body paragraphs should be about the same length, more or less, okay? Uh, exactly, Ankit, maybe carpentry, fashion. Yeah, these are things where, you know, you really need to be in the field, okay? Uh, so then, as it says, give your own opinion. So the conclusion, that's going to be where you say what you think, okay? Um, and as we've said, we're going to say that it depends on the job. Um, anybody else have any particular ideas? Which, what would you say is the best way? Would you go for university education or would you go for experience? Okay, so you could say that both, that we need a combination of the two uh, or a balance of the two, Dimitri, that's exactly right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think it's generally speaking, we say a balance between academics and, uh, and experience, yeah? Okay. Um, so really, really important to just take a couple of minutes before you start writing and make a little table like that. Body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and then, you know, what are you gonna put in your conclusion, okay? Um, Leo, the more specific you are, the better in the task too. You really don't want to be vague. You want to be as specific as you can. Same with the body paragraphs, you know, specific arguments, specific examples, concrete ideas are, are going to be the best thing uh, for the essay. Okay, that's what the examiners like. Okay. So uh, let's now have a look at the uh, structure. Oh, I like that galaxy. Practical applications supported by theoretical knowledge. That would be a great thing to put in your conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the matter, Zeddy? You want me to go back a little bit to here? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So body paragraph, main argument, supporting evidence. Okay second body paragraph on the second statement, main argument, supporting evidence, conclusion, your own opinion. Okay, no worries. Okay, so let's have a look at the structure. So whatever kind of essay you're going to be writing, it's gonna be the same structure, okay? It's going to be the introduction, first of all, which tends to be fairly short. Um, so we've got a few missing words here to fill in. So what are you going to be doing in the introduction? What's your gonna, yes, okay, very good. So we're gonna paraphrase the question, okay? So it's more or less the same information, but using our own words, <laughs> fairly short. Um, maybe about 30 words, Ashwani, yeah? Shorter than the body paragraphs, okay? Yeah, so we're rephrasing um, the task, and we can also make some kind of general statement as well. Uh, and then, because this is a discussion, uh, essay or this is a you know if you have an opinion essay then you do your thesis statement so you're briefly going to give your point of view at the end of the introduction okay but only briefly you don't want any examples or any arguments at this stage okay um, yes that's true Manpreet maybe sport would be a great example to use yeah okay um, then we have body A and body B, okay? We're gonna do that in a minute, Chalapa. 
Um, so the same structure for body A and body B. Okay. Um, so how are we going to start our body paragraphs? Okay, very good guys, very good on top of it. Yeah, topic sentence. So you're going to introduce the topic of this paragraph, the argument of this paragraph, and everything in the paragraph relates back to the topic sentence. Okay, you can't change a uh, topic or subject matter in the middle of the sentence. And then, yes, you're right, Galaxy, then that's going to be followed by supporting evidence. So explaining a bit more, giving reasons, uh, or giving examples, giving evidence, exactly. Yeah. Consequences, that can work as well. Examples. Okay. Um, you just really need to give one tran just to explain i mean it, it doesn't matter you could give two reasons as well uh but what's important is that you use the linking phrases to highlight what you're doing so you would say the first reason bah, 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 you know and then another reason yeah so you're making it very plain with your linking phrases what you're doing okay then in the conclusion, what we are going to do is, what's the missing word here? Okay, well, we're concluding. Yeah, okay, restate or summarize or compare. Those are all really good words to use. Both of the viewpoints followed by, what would you finish with? Okay, yes, your own opinion. Okay, a very clear opinion. Generally speaking, you know, it's better if you are, you know, one side or the other, but don't be vague with your opinion. Okay. So that's your structure. And actually that's the structure for pretty much all of the essays, the task twos. Okay. So let's have a look at the introduction. Okay. So as we said, we need to paraphrase the question. Okay. Um, yeah, your thesis statement will also be your opinion jug, but it will be very brief in the introduction. Okay. Uh, no, I wouldn't give any specific example in the conclusion, Galaxy. Your examples should be in the body. Okay. Your conclusion should be more general. Okay. But we'll have a look in a moment anyway. Uh, so remember, there are different ways to paraphrase. It's not just synonyms. Synonyms are great. But if you only think about synonyms, chances are you're just going to, you're going to, you know, go crazy trying to think of a different word for every single word there. Okay. Uh, no, Daniela, you want to keep your opinion to the conclusion. You don't need a separate paragraph in the body. Okay. Uh, yes, very good. So things like word formation, changing from active to passive, um, changing the word order, things like that. These are all ways of paraphrasing. So you don't need to just focus on synonyms. Think about the grammar as well. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, as we said, word form. Okay. So we're just looking at the introduction, Amina. Okay. Uh, get, Gabriella, get a degree. Um, I mean, to get a degree means was when you finish <laughs> and you graduate, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's have a look at different ways of doing this. So in here we've got is thought by. So what could we say instead? Okay, very nice. Argued is very good for Hannah. It's often... Uh, yeah, remember, it, this is a passive, so we're going to need to use believed, thought, said, argued, considered, yeah, claimed, asserted. Those are all great words to use, okay? Um, and then the next bit is completing university education. So rather than using completing, Okay, very nice. Graduating from university. So here we're using a synonym. Okay. Um, and then we've got this, the best way. So we're here, we're going to change this quite a lot. Okay. 
Um, so, but we can talk about a rewarding, okay, very good, um, YN, career, okay. Um, yeah, even though it works, so yeah, a rewarding career is better than job and it works very nicely with um, rewarding, yeah. Um, you could say a decent job, if you wanted to change good to decent, that would be very nice. Um, white collar jobs are a little bit specific, Manpre. I would say. I mean, I get what you're coming, where you are. Um, occupation would work as well, yeah. And then we need to change over to the other side, okay. Um, so here, rather than use two separate sentences, we're joining them together with while. Okay, so while others, yeah, again, claim, believe, consider, argue, something different to what you've used before, okay? Uh, another way of saying experience, it's a bit harder maybe. How else could we use the word experience? Okay, well, we got experience. What could we put in front of it? Uh -huh. uh, yes, Daniel, it must be academic vocabulary all the way through. Oh, yeah, okay, I like this, hands-on. And um, we've gone for real world, but hands-on is a really good way. Or, yeah, working experience, something like that. That's a really good idea. Okay. And how about developing soft skills? So here we're doing a bit of a word formation. Notice we've got the, so here you don't need to change the word, you just need to say it changed the form of the word. Okay, very good, Vu, yeah. So the development, okay, rather than developing. Okay, so you can use the same word, but use a different form. Um, you would say acquisition, Cherry Ann, if you were gonna use the noun. Um, but acquiring skills works very well, yeah. Okay, and rather than saying more important, we could say, okay, so vital, crucial, things like that as well. Yeah, yeah, word formation counts as paraphrasing, okay. Um, really important to think of paraphrasing much more generally than just synonyms, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, more worthwhile. Okay, all of those are really good words. Okay. Uh, then we follow it with our thesis statement. So very specifically, we can see that this is our opinion. Okay. Um, so both of these. Okay, good. We've got views because that's different from what we said. Maybe criteria would work. Yeah. Okay, we've gone for options, but yes, those are all really good. Both of these statements, Sanam, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. And that the, what would we go here? Not really sentiment. Selection would work, yeah? Yes, maybe the right. I mean, we've tried to go a bit more than just right. So the optimal choice or the, the perfect choice, um, depends on the, what are we going for here? The, okay, yes, we could talk about the future career, the specific career, it's exactly what we put, very good, Neil, the specific career that the person is interested, type of works as well, perspective is a very nice one, yeah, particular, very nice as well, yeah, okay. Um, so notice here, we've got already some linking words. We've got while joining two sentences together. Um, both, both are correct, why, yeah? Um, we've got a linking phrase for the second one, giving our opinion. Um, and we've got another relative clause, okay? Um, so we've got a good range of vocabulary there, okay? We've also got ing as the subject. Okay, complex sentences, good range, okay? So now let's have a look at body paragraph A, okay? So main point, good way of introducing your body paragraphs. Remember we need to keep them, uh, whoops, sorry. We need to keep them general, we need to keep them abstract. So 
it's very good to use a sort of general opinion uh, structure, a passive structure to, um, to introduce, you know, the, the first sentence. Um, so yeah, generally recognized often works well. Uh, widely recognized is good collocation. So widely and recognized works very well together. Okay. Uh, so obtaining a relevant university degree is, what could we put here? Uh, yeah, maybe vital. Yeah, okay, or beneficial. Okay, we've gone for essential. Yeah, very good, crucial. Some great words coming up there. Okay, um, and now we're giving the reason in order to, so again, we're thinking of some good collocation, pursue, very nice, yeah, pursue. It's exactly what we put, okay. Uh, and then we explain why. So again, a phrase to introduce so it's clear that we're giving a reason here. So this is because some, again, let's think about our collocation, something that would go with employment. Yeah, very specifically when you're talking about jobs, fields is a good word to use, okay? Um, yeah, and then again, you're getting very specific vocabulary there and you're getting good collocation, okay? So some fields can only be gained, bum, bum, bum. What are we missing from there? Okay, very good. So we have another relative cause. So years of, could be hard study, could be, yeah, I think think yeah i was thinking academic as well intensive academic thorough that's a really good um possibility joshua extensive as well could be okay and then we give our specific example okay and again we introduce that with a specific linking phrase so we know or the examiner knows when he reads it this we're going to give um we're going to use an example now okay um, so a highly paid, what kind of professions are going to, oh yeah, we got it in the thing, <laughs> yes, doctor, yeah, engineer or lawyer. So, you know, just thinking of some very specific way, you've got to have a university education. It's the only way that you're going to uh, be able to work. Okay. Okay. They have no, got a nice expression here. What goes between, uh, okay, you, you could say choice or alternative. Um, so we've gone for alternative, but choice works as well. Uh, no option, that also works as well. But to complete a course of, of what? Yes, of higher education. Tertiary is a good word as well. Yeah, that works very well. Okay. So uh, let's have a look a little bit more closely at this one, okay? So as I said, notice that we have linking phrases not only at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, yes, higher is very common, um, but also in the middle of the sentence. So we're joining our sentences together in different ways. We've got in order to, we've got which, Okay, and we've got clear linking phrases at the beginning um, of the thing. Uh, if you have a question, Alif, can you put it in the Q&A and we'll look at it at the end, okay? Okay, um, so linking phrases, very important for getting a higher band score, okay? Then we've also got a good range of grammar here, okay? So one of the things, again, the criteria, the marking criteria is uh, grammatical range and fluent um, accuracy. So it's not just about getting the grammar correct, it's about having a range of structures, a range of complex sentences, okay? So here we've got an ING form as a subject, a gerund as a subject, we've got relative clauses, okay? We've got passives, uh, we've got conditionals, we've got quite a high level expression there, which is no alternative but 
Okay, so a good range of sentences. We're not just using the same forms. Uh, yeah, high vocabulary is very important. We're going to look at that now. Um, and collocation, okay, using the right combinations of words, okay. Uh, so a relevant degree, pursue a career is a very good collocation. Fields of employment, again, the collocation there is correct. Okay, specialist knowledge, more collocation, and intensive study. Okay, so throughout there, in every case, we've got exactly the right combination of words that we need to use. Okay, so, um, and highly paid with a profession as well. All right, so we had our main argument, we had our supporting evidence, we were using very precise vocabulary good collocation, linking phrases, complex sentences, okay? Now we're gonna do the same one with the second um, paragraph. So we're contrasting here, so we can start with on the other hand, immediately makes it clear to the examiner that now we're going to look at the opposite point of view. So another way to start, yeah, on the contrary, you could say, okay? Okay, so again, you know, we could say it's argued that, it's believed that, it's claimed that. We can also say it's clear that, or it's um, undeniable that. Very good, Elisa, excellent. Evident that. So these are all really good expressions, okay? And again, it's a general opinion, not a uh, personal opinion, okay? So now we're talking about practical skills rather than soft skills are more, what could we say, more, if we're talking about other kinds of careers, they would be more, not quite got the right, more appropriate, yes, more relevant, more valuable, more useful, yeah, all of those would work. Uh, we've gone for beneficial, advantageous is, work, is great, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Gabriella, definitely a good idea to use one, uh, leave one line blank between each of the paragraphs. So it's very, very clear to the examiner that you're starting a new paragraph. Okay. Uh, so with career, what can we use with career? Okay, career choices, that works fine. Career path is very good. That's what we've gone for. Uh, prospects is great, yeah. Okay, so that's our main argument. That's our topic sentence. Then we need to give the reason. Okay, um, so we're going to use a different expression. We don't want to use the same expression that we already used. Okay, um, so a key reason for this. So some skills can only be, what's a good collocation with skills? Okay, acquired, obtained, gained, learned, those are all really good uh, ones. We've gone for acquired. So acquire and skill, very nice collocations there. Yeah, okay. Mastered Ashwani, that's a really good one as well. Okay. And then we've got a sort of, we've got a, an expression here. So the, the university of life, that's right. Okay. Uh, but notice that it's in inverted commas because it is an expression. So we want to make it clear that we understand that this is, you know, it's not, it's a little bit idiomatic, but it's quite useful to use in this case. So as long as you put it in inverted commas, then it's okay. And then again, we wanna have a specific example for that one. So different expression to last time. Okay, there are many, what again, collocation, what would go in front of entrepreneurs. Okay, self-taught, well-known, successful, those are all very good ideas, yeah, skill, established, that's very nice, yeah. Uh, we've gone for wealthy, but all of those words you used, they were really very good, yeah. Renowned, very nice. Uh, just remember to put the N in, renowned, uh, and then the ED. Self-made, uh, walk squad, that's a really good word, very good, okay. And, okay, so here we just basically got another adjective to put in front of it, <laughs> master chefs, yeah, you could. But yeah, experienced, successful, renowned, you know, world famous, things like that. 
Um, you mean award-winning tongue? Are you asking about award-winning? Uh, yeah, so it means that they have won an award for their cooking. So maybe like a Michelin star. Yeah, they're kind of like a celebrity, Abdul, exactly. Okay. Um, so how can we join these two sentences again? Uh -huh. Okay, who? Okay, and then they never attended university. There's a contrast here. Okay, yeah, but or oh very good why yet very nice way of doing it just a little bit more high level than using but okay and then we've got in their chosen okay field would be good profession would be good yeah any of those again we've gone for field okay and then again we've got really kind of a reason because they've got the practical experience okay so again let's look a bit more closely at some of the language so we have introduced each of our sentences with a linking expression okay um so again it's made it very clear what we're going to say in each of the sentences okay uh and also within the sentences as well um so yet is a very nice quite high level word to use okay and due to so again a range some of them are linking expressions some of them are prepositions okay oh hi pachu <laughs> you're there okay and again a good range of grammar we've got relevant uh, sorry relative clauses okay we've got a mix of tenses uh, we've got who, so we've got different kinds of rel uh, relative clauses, other tenses, okay? Um, so we've got quite a good mix of um, tenses and structures, all complex sentences um, throughout, okay? And then again, collocation in the vocabulary, so career paths, real world experience, acquiring skills, Okay, so we've got achieve success, chosen field, really good range. So with the vocabulary, very important to, to focus on the, the collocation, getting those combinations right. That's maybe more important than, you know, an individual high level word that you might not use quite rightly, but getting the combinations right is really good. Okay. Then um, finally, exactly. So then we come to our conclusion. So again, we just need a very clear linking phrase to show it's in, in conclusion. You don't need to use anything else, you know, in conclusion to conclude. Be careful about using anything a little bit strange. It's more important just to be clear, yeah. Um, and again, a very clear phrase to show that this is our opinion. Uh, I wouldn't use recapitulate because it's not really a, a, re a recapitulation, yeah? Um, I wouldn't word that. To summarize, to conclude, in conclusion, to sum up. That's pretty much everything you can use, okay? Um, so, what's the missing word here? In a nutshell is too informal, Amy. So don't use that in the writing. It's fine in the speaking, but not really in the writing okay good so we're going we're saying both are important as we said at the beginning uh so they can be important what goes with important okay uh yeah keys but yes there's other ways paths roads steps i think that would be good um in this case, I wouldn't use it is believed that. Sorry, I can't remember who asked because you have to make it clear that it's your opinion uh, in the conclusion. So this is where you do use I or my, okay? All right. And then, uh, then we explain that. So we go in a little bit more detail of, the, um, of our choice, of our opinion, okay? So we're saying that choice will, okay, very good, depend 
entirely on the individual. Okay. Be based would be fine as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, also on the individual and their career. Okay. Again, yeah. Choice, path, field. And here we're thinking more of the goals of what they want to achieve. Preference would work very nicely as well. Okay. So if we have a look at that together, so now you can see the whole um, essay and you can see that the, the two body paragraphs are longer than the introduction and the conclusion, okay? Your introduction and your conclusion, you don't want any detail, you don't want any specific examples, they're gonna be a bit more general and therefore generally they're going to be shorter. Okay, it's not much over 250 words, uh, only 255, that's totally fine. You know, as long as it's over 250, you don't need to go crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a nine because there's nothing wrong with it, <laughs> to be honest. So there's no reason to remove any marks from it. Okay, we have a good range of vocabulary. We have a good range of grammar. The structure's clear, the focus is clear, yeah? And that's what you need to focus on. So, you know, it's really keeping the structure quite simple in one way is important, uh, but, you know, the complexity comes with the grammar, with the vocabulary, okay? No, it, it's a nine, okay? It's a nine, all right? So just to go through a few tips and then we'll do questions 10.5. I wish there was a 10.5. Okay, so really, really important guys, write a plan before you start, okay? When you've got that plan, then you're gonna be very focused and you're gonna know exactly what to put in your essay and then you can focus on the grammar, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, don't waste time counting your words. Uh, a very good idea is to download the official IELTS writing answer sheet, which is very easy to do, okay? And just practice writing on that. And then you can, you know, you know exactly what 250 words looks like, okay? And we don't, you know, have to, you don't have to count that, okay? Um, well, it, it's up to you, uh, B.O. You can choose university education, you can choose um, practical experience, or you can say that it's a combination of the two. As long as you use a clear uh, expression that shows that it's your opinion, then that's fine, okay? Um, and try, I know this is quite difficult, but try and leave a couple of minutes at the end to go over, you know, possible mistakes and, you know, know what kind of mistakes you usually make. Generally speaking, people make the same mistakes. So if you know what kind of mistakes you make, you can look for those mistakes at the end, okay? Um, maybe it's articles, maybe it's tenses, don't know. Okay, but um, you know, that's something to sort of bear in mind when you're doing the checking rather than a very general checking, which means you might, you probably just won't see anything. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, if you do the computer based, you don't have to worry about counting the words because the computer counts the words for you. Okay. Uh, last but not least, you know, do as many different essay questions as you can. You don't have to write the full essay out because that does take time, but make plans, yeah? And, you know, try and make as many plans for as many different types of essay question as you can, okay? Um, so we're gonna do some questions in a minute. Just before we do that, can I just um, go through a couple of things for Integrate? Um, so IELTS online tests, if you want to get personal feedback on your writing or your speaking, then uh, there is a service for that. Um, and um, you can check that out on the website. 
Uh, you can also find out what webinars are coming up. It is a paid for service to PK, yeah, because it does take a long, quite a long time and an effort to do that. Yeah. Um, you can also see, uh, can you check on the website, Topeka? I don't actually know um, because I'm one of the examiners rather than uh, the administrator, okay? Uh, you can also find out um, what's coming up in terms of the webinars and you can go look on Facebook and YouTube and go back and look at previous webinars. Uh, you can also ask questions on Facebook and people will try and answer them for you uh, if you don't get your questions answered today which you know we can't ever go through all of the questions okay um, but we'll try and have a look at some of them now um, okay so Gagan is saying can we write two paragraphs on one view and one paragraph on the other view I would stick to two body paragraphs Gagan okay you can have two arguments within one paragraph but to get that balance right you really want to have one body paragraph on one side and one body paragraph on the other side okay um, okay Mohammed that's a good question is it necessary to explain the merits and drawbacks of both even though I agree on only the advantages when it says discuss both sides then you should talk about the advantages of each. So your first body paragraph is supporting the first statement and your second body paragraph is supporting the second statement. Okay, so you are talking about the positives mainly of each of those sides. Okay, um, I would say depend on okay not depend upon it's a bit old-fashioned okay um okay let's say i have two arguments uh okay so i kind of answered that Mohammed. so you can have two arguments but just have them in the one body paragraph okay um Okay, I'll, I'll answer Chilapas because that's quite good. The thesis statement, Chilapa, is just a, a very brief expression of your opinion. The conclusion, you go into it in more detail. Okay, that's mainly the, the same. Yeah, but the, there has to be a link, otherwise, you haven't got a, a well structured essay. Okay. Um, okay, Nat is saying, where can I take the tests in Vietnam? If you go on to the IELTS, um, dot org website or if you go to the british council website you can find the all the locations of the test it's usually with the british council okay um okay uh anonymous is saying how to get a nine in listening um quite difficult experience and exposure anonymous with the listening the best thing you can do is just to listen as much to as much native speaker English as possible. Okay. Um, and then anonymous is, uh, uh, anonymous has also said, what if no ideas come to my mind? And I know that can happen, but again, the best way to avoid not having any ideas is to practice as many different possibilities as you can. You know, the same topics come up again and again in IELTS, things like global warming, technology, social media. So just practice, write um, plans for as many different essays as you can. And, um, you know, that's the best way and have those arguments also, it's a very good idea to read around these kinds of subjects, okay, uh, because that will give you arguments and it will also be good for your reading test. So I would say read as much as possible on the kinds of topics that come up in the IELTS, okay. Um, okay, Dimitri, can we find a dictionary of different synonyms or words, especially for IELTS? I don't think there's one specific to IELTS, Dimitru, but there is a website called, um, there is a, just a thesaurus. Basically, if you get a thesaurus, yes, exactly, Daniel, can be an online thesaurus, can be a printed thesaurus. 
uh, but that is where you will find your synonyms and you know that that's fine you don't need anything specific to IELTS okay um, Ashwani is asking about the usage of idiomatic phrases generally speaking Ashwani in the writing avoid idioms and avoid idiomatic phrases they're great for the speaking but you don't really want to use them they're not academic English and you always want to use academic English in your writing okay all right um, an anonymous is saying if you don't know the terms okay again I'd say the same thing the more you practice the less likely that is uh, they are quite general subjects they're not specialists they're not technical um, so you know you should be able to understand the task and you know the more practice you do the better it is okay all right um okay jessica's saying can i use in a nutshell no don't use in a nutshell in the writing it's an idiom you need to use um an academic phrase like in conclusion okay um okay sherifat says how can we calculate how much we've written um so as i said download the official ielts writing answer sheet practice on that count your words when you're doing the uh, practice get to know what is a good answer in your handwriting what's 160 words or 260 words and then you won't need to count um, in the essay okay um okay okay alif is saying a uh, question about the introduction should we write a general sentence on the subject such as a general entry uh, yeah, that's a really good idea, Elif. You can say, you can make a general statement about how this is an issue today or how things have changed. So that's a very nice way to start your introduction. And, you know, I don't know, maybe about 30 words in the introduction. Generally speaking, you don't want to put too much information. Okay. Um, okay. Let me ask, see if there's a few more. Uh, please, important to find a synonym for practical experience. Uh, so we used words like real, um, real world experience. You could also say hands-on experience. Uh, we also talked about the university of life. Um, so we did use different expressions. Don't worry you know don't panic if you use the same expression more than once it's it's more about showing the examiner that you're not dependent on only a small range of vocabulary if it seems like you don't have enough uh, of a range that's when you're going to lose some marks okay if for example in the speaking you described everything as beautiful well, that means you don't have very much, you know, you don't have the other ways of saying things. Yeah. So that's the way to think about it. Not, oh, I used this word once before, disaster. But, you know, what can you use? Are you showing that your words are specific to the topic? Okay. I think that's a really good thing to think. Is your vocabulary precise to the topic of the writing? If it is, and the collocation is good, then you'll get a good mark, okay? Um, I, yes, so Ayeshka is saying, should I repeat the arguments for both sides in the conclusion? Uh, no, don't repeat them, Ayeshka, just summarize, okay? So just an overall idea of what you were saying, but don't repeat the arguments, okay? That's not, that's gonna be a lot of words and, and uh, kind of, a, a waste of time really okay uh, Amy's asking can I use proverbs uh, I would say no to be honest um, if you do you need to put them in inverted comments uh, sorry inverted commas that's very very important um, if you do that that would be okay but um, you know be careful about using them you certainly wouldn't want to use more than than one in an essay okay a uh, couple of people are writing asking about pen or pencil 
for the writing, you can choose pen or pencil. It's up to you. Again, I would practice and see which one you prefer. If you write in pencil, you can rub it out a lot more easily, but some people just, you know, don't like writing in pencil. So, you know, you've really just got to see how, how it fits. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Topeka saying any difference between IDP and the British Council? Uh, no difference at all. The IELTS exam comes from Cambridge, so it doesn't matter whether you take it in an IDP centre or a British Council centre, it's going to be exactly the same. And usually the examiners work for both. Okay, so that wouldn't make any difference anyway. Okay. Um, what else can we say? Uh, yeah, do Amuka saying, will marks be deducted for wrong spelling? Um, yes. If you had a few mistakes, you know, you could still get a good seven if you had two or maybe a couple of mistakes spelling. Um, but if you were making regular mistakes, that would definitely be down to a six or a five. And if the spelling mistakes were so bad that it was hard to understand what you were saying, you know, then that could possibly get you actually down to a four. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can take one more question. Um, oh yeah, Gully is asking about vocabulary. There is a book called Vocabulary for IELTS, which Cambridge publish, um, which each unit is on a specific topic uh, and those topics that come up, you know, all the time in writing and speaking, like I was saying, the environment, technology, education, and they have a book which specifically looks at each topic in turn and gives you a whole range of vocabulary and practice uh, with that vocabulary, and they also have exam practice as two, as well, okay? Uh, I'm going to have to finish there, guys. Sorry, I know there's a lot of questions. Remember that you can put your questions on um, Facebook and somebody is tasked with answering those questions, okay? Um, thank you very much for coming to the webinar. I hope very much to see you again next time, okay? That's really, really great. I hope it's been useful. Um, best of luck if you have your IELTS test coming up. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Okay. Um, and see you next week, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.